All right, guys, um, injuries from the game. Uh, J.P. Mason had a shoulder, did not return, um, the same one. Um, D. Winters had a concussion, didn't return. Um, Debo Samuel, ribs, didn't return. Renardo Green, ankle, didn't return. Go ahead. Kyle, what did you think of Garendo? He had a, hadn't played a whole lot. He had six yards of carry tonight. I thought he did a great job. Came in, he was ready to go. Um, J.P. got banged up. J.P. tried to come back and maybe could have, but um, Isaac was rolling and did a good job. What was, what was the halftime message? You guys obviously came out really well in the third quarter, so was there anything? Stop adjustment? having penalties. Stop having penalties. Uh, there was no message. It was we got to stop hurting ourselves. Um, you, know, I, you know, we had, I think, seven and a half yards of play in the first half and um, had a bunch of big penalties that I uh, thought really hurt us. You know, Debo's obvious one getting called back, a couple of the holdings on the, some long runs. Um, and then, you know, missing that fourth down was big. Um, we felt we were doing some good stuff, but we hurt ourselves. And it was nice to start off um, in the third quarter and go down and score right away. And um, D started rolling. I think we got a turnover the next drive and did it again and um, got a little groove there for a little bit. What was the concern level there in the fourth quarter when they were, when they were coming back? And what you um, see big. Was I mean, uh, when you're up 17 or whatever it was, 13, um, and then uh, take it to a six point game and you're getting the ball with three minutes left, I mean, that's just normal football. And um, for the D to struggle for a couple of series like they did, and then when they got it back for a possible game winning drive to go four and out was huge. Yeah, what was so special about <coughs> playing the second half? Uh, and do you think this was a sign of things to come after the bottom? Uh, yeah, I do. I mean, I think it was a gut check for him. I mean, for all of us, you know, things in the first half, you know, we were close, but it didn't go great. Um, Brock, there's a couple of plays I know he'd love to have back, and uh, I thought he came out in the second half. and. Uh, there's a few plays that weren't there, and he did a hell of a job extending with his feet. Um, the one in particular, we're trying to throw a screen to Debo, and the DN peeled with it, and which is, means you have no play, and he just ran and turned it into a 16-yarder. 16, 16 um, so he did some real big things there in the second half. You're just a lot was said about the red zone issues in red zone. The Coastal Florida Niners came out with a lot of poise on those drives and they scored 24 and answer points. Talk about how they were able to solve those red zone issues. Uh, I mean, it was just one game. Uh, it's a long year. We'll see where we end up in the red zone at the end of the year. But I thought we ran the ball uh, much better down there, um, and that helps. You're just coming off of this, but Kyle, you're four and four going into the bye. Can you assess how these first eight games have gone and what you see, you know, coming up in the second half? Um, I can maybe do that for you tomorrow. I'm just thinking about this game right now. But um, I'm glad, you know. You, know, you always go into a season, you expect to win them at all. Um, so you're not exactly where you want to be. Um, but going into this game, uh, we knew this was a big win. You know, we didn't want to be three and five going into the bye week, having your backs against the wall like that. Um, getting that win was huge. Being four and four, um, not not at all the record that we wanted when we set out. Um, but when you look at our division and everything, feeling a real good spot, and um, especially finishing it here with a win. Hopefully, we can take some time off, rest a little bit. Um, get a couple guys back, hopefully, and come back and string some wins together here in the second half. Since he was a rookie. What is it about him that can? OK, go ahead, Jerry. You had Kittle since he was a rookie. If you, um, was nice. <clears throat> is there anything he does that surprises you? And is, isn't he, in your mind, still an ascending player? Kittle? Yeah. Um, I mean, Kittle's, Kittle's the man, so um, especially on his holiday, um, he usually does better. Um, but there's a couple of things in the first half, I and mean, just like Brock, um, that he missed. Um, a couple he would have loved to have back, and um, he came back in the second half and just played as good as you can. Garendo, going back to Garendo, I'm taking this one. Going back to Garendo, what do you think? What do you attribute kind of his surge of confidence to in the last several weeks? Because there's certainly been a marked difference in how he's been running. Um, I think you know. I think he's learned from each run he's gotten. You know, there's a couple runs earlier in the year that he did all right on, but you know, we, we grade him pretty hard, everybody pretty hard, and you know. He had a couple like four yard runs. We thought he could have got seven yards on. You know, we go pretty hard on him. And then you watch how he takes that to practice. And, you know, everything we've really kind of been pushing him with, he's been real coachable. He's not a sensitive guy. He's real detailed. And um, he's very poised for a rookie. Things aren't too big for him. And um, didn't get a lot of preseason. But um, once he got healthy there and throughout this year, I feel he's gotten better each week. Following up on that keto question, how, as you drop a game plan with receivers hurt like you have, how comforting is it sort of to have a, a tight end like that who's been so reliable for so long and, and obviously has a rapport with Brock? Uh, it's very comfortable. I mean, you know, it was a challenge, you know, losing some of these guys, losing B.A. last week and not having Juwan, um, Debo being a little banged up and then not having him there late in the game. Uh, you need everyone to step up, and uh, I thought a lot of guys did, and Kittle did in a huge way. You talked about 
Rendo Pearsall had a big third down catch. You're playing Mustafa, you're playing Green, you got obviously Pooney. In the middle of the game or even after, does it hit you like, my God, this, this rookie class, if you didn't have them, something else uh, would be happening this season? Um, I mean, yeah, I, mean, I think about that a lot during the week. I mean, that, that's who we're practicing a lot with during the week. You know, we went into this year, we thought it'd be real hard for a lot of the rookies to earn starting positions, just where our team was at. But um, we believed that they were going to give us some real good depth. And you, you hope to have some good luck and stuff and not have to get to that. Um, but we haven't in all areas. And unfortunately, um, that a lot of those guys are players. They showed it in preseason. And um, when their number's been called, they've all come in and done their job. And um, they all continue to get better, too. What happened on the sack? When you're, you're, when you're up six, the sack on that last, the last, or second to last drive for you guys, what happened on that play and how impressive was it for Brock to be able to hold on? Oh, uh, on the, the one that he got sacked on? Oh, yeah. They had everyone up at the line of scrimmage, so we had a can, which is just how we get out of place, audible. Um, but uh, which he had Ricky all wide open, but the guy in the line of scrimmage hit it so hard and he couldn't get it off. So it was really an unbelievable play um, by Brock not fumbling. Brock has a scrambler. What does that aspect of his game add to the offense? Uh, it just adds another tool. I mean, it's really tough. Um, the heat of battle, um, just with all those plays and situations that you know you get sometimes where if the guys aren't open and things that the play's over, um, or just when someone um, you know misses in the pocket and someone gets there, it usually ends fast. But Brock's got the quickness to get away from people. He's got a kind of feeling when to hit it, and uh, he was awesome today with the scrambling, and he's been awesome all year with it. Debo's ribs and Renardo's ankle, do you have any indication of how serious they are yet? I don't. Some discussion in Seattle if Garendo actually meant to slide. He maintained, of course, he did. But obviously, there's no doubt on this one. I guess, do you agree with that? And it's pretty heads up for a rookie. I mean, is that something he was told, told before that? Yeah, yeah, we told him on this one. No. <laughs> but he listened, at least. It's, it's hard to turn that down um, when you're running in. And I'm glad he did it for the second time. Um, but this one was much better. Evo obviously had a big role in this game. When, when did you know that he could handle a big role given what he went through? Um, I mean, watching him at, I mean, it wasn't necessarily the big, I didn't really know he could have a big role until really talking to him Saturday. But the fact he was able to come out and practice some on Thursday um, and, you know, do some back to back plays and stuff, just seeing how it was. And, you know, when you hear that stuff at the beginning of the week and pneumonia and things like that, it's, you know, my mind is kind of ruled out. But, um, you know, when they started working him out on Tuesday and said he had a chance and um, that he got through practice to a degree on Thursday. And by the time Saturday came, he said he was feeling great. And um, we still rotated him a lot and stuff, but um, we want to get the ball in his hands. Kyle, what was your message to the team going into the bye week? Um, I'll, that'll, that'll probably be tomorrow. Um, you know, going into the bye week will be Monday and Tuesday. I'll have a message for him, but I haven't thought of it yet. It'll be to rest and come back ready to go. Just curious, he asked about the uh, halftime speech. Did you overhear any of like the leaders on the team in the locker room saying anything? You guys, it's a game. You guys know where you are record-wise. Did anybody say anything or no? No, honestly, people never do. It's that's more for movies. I mean, we only, we only have a few minutes in there, and guys break up into their stuff, and we re re review everything that's happened, everything that's going forward, and usually it's hectic and kind of a, sh a something show, and. <laughs> And sometimes I call the guys up and quickly break it down. And sometimes I have to go to the bathroom and I tell Fred to call them up. And so I just say, Fred, well, offense is up. You got it. Let's go. And um, we just come out. So it's more scheme. All right. Thanks, guys.